Hello, welcome to Analog Arts Oscilloscope Tutorial. Please feel free to download the demo application software from AnalogArts.com to help you follow this seminar. For this presentation, we use a two-channel 1 GHz bandwidth oscilloscope, one of the instruments of SL987. In this instrument, all the user controls unique to channel 1 are grouped in the channel 1 panel. Similarly, all the controls unique to channel 2 are grouped in the channel 2 panel. Besides these two panels, there are a display mode panel, a timing panel, a trigger panel, a data acquisition mode panel, a bandwidth panel, and a utility panel. Each individual button in these panels allows the user to perform a unique task. Together, they control the various features of the oscilloscope. In order to illustrate these features, we must first provide a real-life application. We connect channel 1 to a 5 volt 50 kHz sine wave with the 10x scope probe and connect channel 2 to a 4 volt 500 kHz square wave using a coax cable. We also connect the external trigger input of the oscilloscope to the channel 1 corresponding triggering signal. The oscilloscope originally resets to its default settings. Depending on the application, these settings might not be suitable. In order to have accurate measurements, we must first choose the proper probe setting. Since we are using a 10x scope probe for channel 1, 10x, the default setting, is appropriate. The green buttons in channel 1 panel adjust the vertical scale of the oscilloscope. The button mark with the up arrow increases the voltage range, whereas the button mark with the down arrow decreases it. The 10x probe setting, the vertical scale can be changed from 20 volts per division to 20 millivolts per division. If the signal amplitude is outside the vertical range of the screen, clipping occurs. When this happens, the data is no longer valid. The data information panel highlights this condition in red. Once the voltage setting is adjusted for channel 1 such that clipping does not occur, the maximum voltage of the signal, its minimum, its peak-to-peak -peak value, and its frequency are accurately displayed in their corresponding panels. The button with the left pointing arrow in the timing panel reduces time per division and the button with the right pointing arrow increases it. The range of the timing scale adjustment is from 1 nanosecond per division to 100 millisecond per division. In order to view a full cycle of the signal on channel 1, we need to adjust the timing scale to 2 microsecond per division. Notice that the data corresponding to the position of the mouse is also displayed near its position in each channel's corresponding color. Turning on the AC button in the channel 1 panel switches the input coupling from DC to AC. Adding a 1 volt offset to the signal has no effect on the channel 1 plot when the oscilloscope input is AC coupled. However, switching back to the DC mode shows that the signal level is indeed raised by 1 volt. Removing the 1 volt offset brings the signal to the middle of the screen again. Turning on the button labeled ground disconnects channel 1 from the signal and connects it to the ground level. This is usually done to find and observe the ground reference on the screen. The yellow arrow on the right side of the screen indicates the zero or the ground level. The positions of arrows, signals, and markers can be changed both vertically and horizontally. To do this, left click the mouse near the signal or the arrow and while holding the mouse down, move it to the intended position and then release the mouse. Be aware that each time the channel vertical scale is changed, its corresponding horizontal arrow resets back to the middle of the screen. Now, let's turn on channel 2. Since the frequency of the signal on channel 2 is different from the signal frequency on channel 1, in order to properly view the signal, we need to change the trigger setting from channel 1 to channel 2, adjust the timing scale, and also the voltage scale. For this signal with the frequency of 500 kHz, 500 nanosecond per division is an appropriate timing scale. Since we are using a coax cable for channel 2, the 1x scope probe setting must be used. Although the signal on channel 1 is not triggered, signal information is accurately displayed in the panel. The blue arrow on the right side of the screen indicates the zero or the ground level for channel 2. Moving the arrow changes this level. The signal on each channel can be inverted by the invert button. 
They can also be added and subtracted by the channel 1 plus channel 2 button in the channel 1 panel and channel 1 minus channel 2 button in the channel 2 panel. The trigger panel allows the user to trigger on channel 1, channel 2, and or on an external signal. The orange arrow on the left side of the screen shows the trigger threshold level, which is set at 0, its default value. The trigger threshold level can be changed by moving this arrow. When the vertical setting of the channel on which the oscilloscope is triggered on is changed, the trigger threshold is reset back to zero, its default value. The horizontal orange arrow on the bottom of the screen indicates the position of the trigger point. The position of this arrow can also be changed. This arrow resets to its default position each time the timing scale is changed. We can also use the external triggering of the scope, which is presently connected to the triggering signal corresponding to the channel 1 input. Clicking the bottom mark falling in the trigger panel changes the trigger polarity from the rising edge to the falling edge of the trigger signal. We have been using auto triggering until now. In this mode, regardless of whether the triggering condition occurs or not, the screen is refreshed. Changing the triggering level to a condition that will never happen illustrates this operation. In the auto triggering mode, if we move the triggering level outside the signal range, although we lose the triggering condition, the screen is still refreshed asynchronously. In the normal mode, however, the screen is updated only when the triggering condition is met. Clicking the normal button changes the triggering to this mode. Since the triggering level is outside the range of the signal, the screen holds the previous data and is no longer updated. Changing the triggering threshold to a level inside the signal range makes the screen refresh synchronously again. The single mode trigger, as its name would suggest, updates the screen the first time the triggering condition is met and holds the data forever, regardless of any other conditions. This is a useful feature to catch a glitch or a random event. To activate it, simply click on the bottom mark single. As we have expected, the screen updated only once. Changing back the trigger into the auto mode makes the screen refresh continuously again. Each channel also provides the user with a set of horizontal markers for analyzing the signals. They are turned on and off by clicking the marking buttons. The voltage difference between the horizontal markers are updated and displayed at the screen's top right for channel 1 and bottom right for channel 2 in their corresponding colors. There is also a set of timing markers, which can be used for timing and frequency measurements. They are activated by clicking on the button markers in the timing panel. The corresponding time and frequency data are displayed at the left bottom corner of the screen. The timing panel also features the zoom in and the zoom out buttons. The zoom in feature allows the user to select a portion of the signal and zoom on it. To illustrate this, let's change the timing to 20 milliseconds per division to see a bigger segment of the buffer memory. Then, we select a portion of the screen by the timing markers and click on the zoom in button. Notice that the screen displays the selected portion now. The zoom in action is undone by clicking the zoom out button. The data acquisition panel features sampling, history, average, envelope, and peak detect mode. To have a better understanding of the different types of acquisition modes, the input to channel 1 is replaced with a white noise signal having an AC RMS value of 1 volt. To view this signal properly, channel 1 vertical scale is set at 500 millivolts per division and the timing scale is set at 500 nanoseconds per division. The sampling mode, the mode we have been using up to now, selects some of the data points stored in the buffer memory and presents the data in the form of a plot on the screen at the refresh rate speed. 
the information between the selection points is lost. Also, each time the screen is updated, the previous data is erased from the screen. Sampling offers a uniform sample data suitable for timing measurements. In this mode, the screen displays white noise as expected. In the history mode, however, the screen retains the data. The number of retained acquired data can be changed by entering the desired value in the sample text box. This number can range from 1 to 256. To maintain all the previous data, simply input an I in the sample text box. Notice the older data are displayed with a lesser intensity. History tracks the signal changes and displays a collective set of data. It is the method of choice for observing signal variation over time. In the average mode, the displayed signal is the average of a number of consecutively acquired data points. The number entered in the sample text box determines how many sets of data are average. This number can range from 1 to 256. Average is best suitable for repetitive signals. This mode removes the uncorrelated noise and the high frequency content of a signal. Since channel 1 input is noise, increasing the number of averages reduces the amplitude of the displayed signal. An averaging number of 100 has a dramatic effect on the signal. The peak detect mode continuously finds the highest and the lowest data values in the acquired data and displays them on the screen. The number in the sample text box specifies the number of the consecutive data points that are displayed on the screen. This number can range from 1 to 256. Peak detect is a suitable method for identifying high frequency contents of a signal. Notice that after a few acquisitions, a band corresponding to the minimum and the maximum values of the signal appears on the screen. Higher number of the samples specified in the text box makes these bands more defined. The envelope mode produces a cumulative set of minimum and maximum values at each point. This is similar to the peak detect mode performed on multiple acquisitions. Here the display retains the previous data for the number of times specified in the sample text box. This number can also range from 1 to 256. Each mode offers its own unique advantages and is suitable for certain applications. The small signal 3 dB bandwidth of the oscilloscope is 1 GHz. In case the application environment contains high frequency noise and the intended signal to be observed is low frequency, the oscilloscope bandwidth can be adjusted to reduce this unwanted noise. A square wave demonstrates the effect of bandwidth reduction better than other signals. Therefore, to observe the effect of bandwidth reduction, a 5 volt 2.5 MHz square wave is applied to channel 1. Turning on the bandwidth limit button in the bandwidth panel reduces the bandwidth to its default value of 50 MHz. Specifying a different value in the bandwidth text box changes the bandwidth accordingly. This value can range from 20 to 50 MHz. Clicking the bandwidth limit button to the off condition disables the bandwidth limit and changes the oscilloscope bandwidth back to 1 GHz. Up to this point, we have been using the YT display mode of the oscilloscope, where the vertical axis represents the amplitude of the signal and the horizontal axis represents time. In the XY mode, the X axis no longer represents time. To illustrate oscilloscope XY mode of operation, let's connect both channels to sine wave sources of about 500 kHz. Here, the screen plus the variation of channel 1 signal with respect to the variation of channel 2 signal. The y-axis represents channel 1 signal and the x-axis represents the signal on channel 2. Notice the plot in pink. This plot, which is known as Lesseju pattern, shows the phase difference between the two signals. Since the frequencies of the sine waves are identical, this pattern changes from a straight line to a circle. When the signal are exactly in phase, a minus 45 degree straight line appears. This line represents a zero degree phase difference between the signals. When the signals have a 180 degree phase difference, the line's angle becomes a positive 45 degree. A 90 degree phase difference produces a circle. If the frequencies are not identical, different patterns appear. The XY mode is a useful feature for vector monitoring and phase analysis. To turn off the XY mode, simply click on it. The utility panel on the top of the screen allows the user to perform a number of tasks. 
The reset button brings the oscilloscope to its default condition. The auto set button automatically finds the best voltage and timing scales for the present signals. The pause button freezes the screen and holds the data as long as the oscilloscope is in this mode. Killing in the button again, which is marked run now, switches back the oscilloscope to its normal mode of operation. The oscilloscope settings can be saved in a text file. To do this, simply click on the Save Setting button. The Recall Settings button allows the user to load any desired settings. In addition to the settings, the user can save the oscilloscope plot and recall it at any time. The plot can be saved in a variety of formats. The Save Reference button enables the user to save a signal plot as a reference for a later use. To load the reference signal, click on the Recall Reference button. Notice the reference signal is plotted in white color. Those applications in which signals are tested against a reference can benefit from this feature. To remove the reference signal from the screen, click on the Remove Reference button. The Calibrate button allows the user to start the self-calibration process of the oscilloscope at any time. This process usually takes about 10 seconds to complete. The Display button hosts a set of features which enable the user to easily configure the display to his or her likings. They help the user to personalize the color of each channel, the color of the screen, the order by which the channels are plotted, and customize the screen grid. Clicking the print button sends the oscilloscope plot to a printer selected by the user. The help button guides the user to an online analog art information site that hosts a collection of user manuals, specifications, and useful application documentation and videos. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation. For additional information, please send an email to info at analogarts.com.